Today's podcast is brought to you in part by Manning Publications. If you use the discount code YTFisher at checkout, you'll get 40% off my Docker in Motion course. It is five and a half hours long and it teaches the fundamentals of Docker. Go to howtocowell.net forward slash Docker in Motion to get my course or other video courses and books from Manning Publications. Link in the description below. Hello, coders, and welcome to another How to Code Well podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about getting into the web development industry. I have the pleasure of speaking to Matthew Glenn. Hi, Matthew. How's it going? Have you had a good week? I'm very well, Peter. Thank you. Yeah, I've had a great week. Uh, I haven't done a lot, just uh, lied around mostly. Is this because you're on holiday? It is, yes. That's, that's why I'm also red. <laughs> well, thank you ever so much for coming on the show whilst you're on holiday. Um, that's uh, that's so, so cool. Um, we're going to be talking about getting into the web development industry. But before we do, let's let's talk about your, your background. So how did you get into coding in the first place? Yeah, so it was a, a bit of a strange one. I um, so the last four years, I've been working in a plasterboard factory, working shifts, uh, driving forklift trucks and running different machines. Um, so at the time, I had no idea what coding was, web development, wow. any, any anything to do with it. Wow. Um, yeah, so it, I was kind of um, getting a bit disillusioned with the whole factory job and, and working shifts. I, I don't sleep very well, so that was taking its toll. So mm-hmm. I was in the process of looking for a new kind of career. I wasn't sure whether it was going to be an electrician or plumber or I was thinking a trade along those lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was one night I was on a shift with a colleague and we were having a cup of tea and, and he, um, he started talking about his daughter's boyfriend who was a software engineer. And uh, I had no idea what it was or what he did, but he said that he, he sits at an office all day and, and types these codes and uh, creates things out of nothing, which intrigued me. Yeah. Uh, um, but my initial thought was it's got to be a, a degree and a specialized kind of thing. But I think it stuck with my, it stuck in my mind. And a week later or so, I was thinking about how he said he created something from nothing. I've always quite been quite creative and liked to to make things. So mm. I started Googling it and then you start to come across all these massive online courses, uh, three code camp, tree house, uh, code Academy and things like that. So I kind of took it from there and uh, started along this path. And I think it was a year and a half, no, 18 months later, wow. I eventually uh, landed a job. It wasn't just 18 months of work. I thought there was, bumps along the way and uh, you question whether it's for you at some points, but it was a good journey and I enjoyed it. Of course, of course. So, and congratulations on doing so. Um, so were you learning coding whilst you were working, um, you know, on the forklift? Yeah. 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 So I had, um, it was a three week rotation. So sometimes I'd be on night shifts. Sometimes I'd be on days. Yeah. Sometimes I'd be working in the afternoon. So depending on what week it, it was, would kind of depend how much work I got done. Mm. If, if it was on a night, I just found most of the time that my brain just struggled to contain any of the information and I couldn't couldn't think through problems. Whereas if it was on an early shift, I could finish early in the afternoon mm. two o'clock and, and work my way through problems and get a good few hours in after that. Wow. But yeah, it was kind of really tough to get consistency in a way. Yes. Yeah. So it was kind of a... a break for a week when I would be doing seven night shifts and just you just didn't get a lot done to be honest you tried to maintain where you were at wow and were you whilst you were whilst you were at work were you thinking about the things that you you would be learning yeah well yeah. I was um I was in a job where there was a few different machines running mm. but once they were running um I could kind of get away with a cheeky look on the internet and I would I would work a bit, get the hour in there and here and there at work. So mm. I'd obviously be in trouble if they found out, but it was one of those <laughs> things. <laughs> I was enjoying it and it was either that or most people sat on the phones or watching YouTube. So I thought I might as well do something constructive with the time. I like that. I like that. Uh, how how did you stay motiv- motivated for 18 months? Um, 
the job motivated me because I wanted out of it. That was <laughs> that was a big drive. Um, it, it was one of those industries where I think it was eight years before the the housing market had collapsed and there had been a lot of redundancies. So hmm. the old people who worked there still remembered that, and it was quite apparent that. Um, it works in a cycle and one day that, that cycle might come back around and you could be out of a job. Mm. And at that time, I, my skills were running a machine that ran at 800 degrees and burned minerals, which sounds great, mm. but isn't very transferable. Mm. Uh, so I, w- I was worried about that as well. I-, I wanted to be in a career where I could use my, my, my mind and I could bring value to um, a company and not just kind of be a number which very much felt like that. Sure. I mean, how did, how did it work with that job? Were you like checking in and out of times and stuff, you know, supplying timesheets of, of things? Um, it was a case of the, the factory ran and I, I had to supply them with minerals from running different machines. So I was on my own. Okay. Uh, 90% of the job. I, right. I was off in a, a completely separate from everyone else. Right. So it was a bit, a lonely existence at times, but yeah, it, yeah. It, turned, it was, I had the advantage of I could sit there and work for a couple hours on a computer and, and teach myself while at work, which a lot of people can't do, obviously. Sure. So, I mean, did you, did you end up, I mean, how, there's lots of questions that I want to pull apart on this, um, yeah. because I, I find this fascinating going from a completely different career to, to uh, web development. How did you settle on web development how did you come to the conclusion that um because you said you you spoke to a chap who was a coder but how did you settle on web development as your as the thing that you want to code yeah well i, I did the the usual thing of googling and you you'd look at job postings and, and kind of try and figure out what the industry had and was there a demand for it mm. um, and at first when i when i first heard about it i kind of started it as a side project, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can make websites for local people a bit on the side. And I never really thought it would be a full-time career. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it must have been about six months in when I, I, you didn't have to motivate yourself. I just enjoyed sitting down for an hour or two and working on puzzles. And then I kind of thought the, the more that I did it, the more I enjoyed it. And I thought, well, why not just turn it into a career and have a go and, um, it was just kind of making a plan from there mm-hmm. to getting myself to a point where I was hireable. Mm. Um, and I, I kind of played at it for the first six months mm-hmm. until I really decided um, and said to myself and, and decided to tell other people as well. That was a big turning point when you say, oh, I'm, I'm learning this on the side and I want to become a web developer. Yeah, definitely. Cause that's, that's like you accepting that. That's the, yeah, yeah that's the decision that you've made. Um, and and therefore you become accountable for that because you are the one who said that. Yes, I do get that. Um, so so am I right in thinking that um, you started in a sort of a hobbyist mindset? This is what yeah. you were just playing with, and then after that you you decided that this is the thing that you wanted to do as a replacement for the for the factory stuff that you were you were you were doing at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just kind of. Um, went along and I was doing it on the side and really enjoying it. And then I was, I got really into free code camp mm. uh, and started listening to their podcasts and they post a lot of stories. Obviously people come from non-technical backgrounds and mm. get these kind of jobs. So the more of those that you start to read, the more you think, well, why can't I ever go? Why can't I do it? Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah. It's the inspiration. Yeah. 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 And that kind of got me on my way. Um, and then like I said, I did it to the point where I thought, I'm going to make the commitment. I'm going to tell other people that I'm going to try and do this. And uh, I always remember the evening that I went in and decided to tell my parents. And I thought, right, I went in, my mum was there and I was like, I've, I've been doing this thing. I've been creating websites and I showed her a bit of the code and she was encouraging me and uh, she was always going to be positive. And then my, my dad came in and I always thought my dad's very old fashioned and it was going to be a harder sell. And we sat down, had a cup of tea and told him all about coding and the jobs that I could get into. And he just sat there in silence for a minute and then said, um, I think you should sell houses for a living. <laughs> something, <laughs> something along the lines of that. 
he, he's always looking out for me, but oh, dear. different ideas. Yeah, <laughs> selling houses for a living. Oh, that's a great, that's great. Um, so how did you yourself come to the conclusion of, of going from a hobbyist to, um, you know, knowing that you have enough skill to even consider being in the industry? How, yeah. how, how did that transition work? Um, I don't think there was a, a single point when I decided I'm not going to do this on the side. I'm, I'm going to go for it. Um, mm. It was just kind of gradually, the more I did it, the more I found it interesting. Mm. Um, and the more podcasts and things you listen to, the the more that you kind of graduate, uh, gravitate towards thinking, why not? And when I started looking at the jobs and the requirements, I started thinking, well, I'm going to need to do this, um, something to make me stand out from the crowd. So I think when I, when I decided... Um, I was going to do some real life projects and real life work, something to really show off what I'd been learning and, um, and something to show employers that mm. I could do, um, I could do something in the real world. Um, so I remember there was a photographer who was a friend of mine who, who works and he did a bit of photography and he had a website and I was looking through some of his images and his website wasn't the best. So I just thought, well, why not make this the project? And it took me ages to build up the confidence to say to him, why can't I do a website for you? And, um, yeah, of course, as soon as I said, would you like me to do a website? He goes, yeah, great. And it was, it was nothing, but building, building up to get to that point to say, yeah, I can, I can make you a site mm. doing, um, mm. and it, a lot of it's in your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it takes a lot to get your mind into it. To the place where you can ask these kind of questions. Yes, definitely. It's a it's a confidence thing. I I feel. Um, yeah. Uh, you 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 get you you say hello to the imposter syndrome quite a bit. I think um, uh, we all do. It doesn't matter how you know talented one is in in programming. Um, there's always this thing where. <laughs> You, you doubting yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I do it on a very regular basis. Um, so how did, how did it move from, you know, doing that fella's site to, to, to actually getting a job? I mean, what, I mean, I guess that was a real big confidence boost. It was like, you know, you've actually done that that guide site so you can actually do a site that's kind of like a, a big tick but how did you how did that progress into um uh, actually applying because i mean that's a that's a big step applying yeah well um i think a, a big step i took before i started applying was um and going to the meetups um right. okay yep it wasn't something that because you obviously i, I was in an area i lived in cumbria Mm -hmm. And it's very sparse and it's not known for its web development. So I didn't know anyone in tech. It's a lovely area. <laughs> very nice. We live 10 minutes from the lake. So oh, it's great at that level. Lovely. Not so much for tech. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I was driving down. I got weeks off with my job. Mm -hmm. So I'd drive down to Preston or Manchester and, and go to the meetups and just talk people through what I was doing. And the fantastic. It was the best thing I did. Um, and you just get to go through what problems you've got and they'll give you advice and, and kind of point you in the right direction. So mm -hmm. once I've been down to Manchester a couple of times and showed them what I was making, they kind of start pushing you towards, well, at the end of the day, if you apply and they say no, then you just apply again. Um, or they might give you some advice and, and you can take that and work on it and they encourage you to, to, to just go for it. Cause the worst that can happen is they say no at the end of the day. That's that's completely correct. And if they say no, then nothing really has changed in the sense that, you know, you're you're still going to be doing coding the next day, aren't you? It's just yeah. you're going to be doing it for yourself rather than for them. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, the more rejections, the 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 confidence drops. But it sounds as though you 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 know you you took the bull by the horns and you went you know, you were totally committed by this. You, you were sucked into the ecosystem of web development. Um, driving down that far or up that far, I can't quite get the geography right. Um, it, you know, that's a commitment in itself, right? That's like a day's travel. So to, to, to do that. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, I think it took me a couple hours yeah. each way. Yeah. But when I got down there, it was six till 10. So I was getting four solid hours of, of advice, which um, you can get so much online. Yeah. But I, I mean, I didn't go every week or anything like that. It wasn't a big commitment. It was if I was stuck on a particular thing, I was really struggling to figure something out mm. um, and Googling just wasn't doing it because that's a skill in itself. Mm. Then, then driving down to these meetings and, and seeing people that wanted to help you mm-hmm. was, was fantastic. Yeah. It, it just, yeah. it's great. So what, so these meetups, they, they, they sound like workshops. What, what, what kind of things were they? Yeah. Um, the ones in Preston was very much a kind of beginner's intro workshop. Right. Um, I think I found it on, it was on the meetup app. Okay. Uh, and the one in Manchester was a free code camp meetup. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. 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 I think I, I stumbled across it through a blog article or something like that. So mm-hmm. those guys went down and that was very much relaxed and it wasn't really a workshop. It was just kind of some people turned up and some of them were working, some were just having a chat and yeah, it's a, it's a nice environment to learn. Um, and I definitely encourage anyone mm-hmm. who wanting to get into development to kind of take that jump. Uh, it's it's massively scary at first. I, I just remember sweating, walking in and thinking there's going to be all these scary, super clever people. But once you get in the room, everyone's dead nice and uh, willing to help. Yeah. The biggest challenge is getting into that door. Um, yeah. 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 And once you, mm-hmm. once you're there, they're all welcoming and yeah, it, well, us programmers are lovely people. <laughs> Very true, yeah. And there's always donuts as well, so you can't go wrong. <laughs> there's always food. Yeah, yeah. The, the meetups I go to, they have pizza, <laughs> which is yeah. awesome. Um, okay, so so you this is like really pushing up the confidence and, you know, making you feel like you can actually do, do this thing. Is it that at that point you, you then, uh, you know, look for jobs to apply for? Yeah, yeah um, I kind of, I had a bit of a different approach. I, I, I I've always been um, one of those people who likes to try and get as direct as possible to mm-hmm. employers. I've, um, I always like to see somebody face to face, and if not, kind of an email or something like that. I've, I've never been one for throwing my CV into the apps and job sites and recruiters and things like that. Uh, I know it works for some people, but on paper, academically, I've, I've never looked the strongest. So I, I wanted to kind of approach it differently. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so one of the ways that I did that was I was always looking for direct employers advertising jobs. Mm-hmm. So, um, I never, I never applied for any agency ones. Um, and at th- the first one I did was in Cumbria and um, it was about an hour down the motorway and, um, I found it on a job site and, um, I found the owner on LinkedIn, um, and decided to, send her an email and just sent her kind of a, a few paragraphs about what I was about, some of the projects I've been working on and they have certain um, tech that they use. Um, so I tried to tie my projects in and, and just explain to them the reality of the situation that I had no experience. I was looking for somebody to take a bit of a gamble on me, but I, um, I could obviously show them where I'd come from nothing to where I was then. And, uh, it, it was, it was, it worked well for me. I, I got quite a lot of um, positive feedback from it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and it was a good thing. Yeah. I, I, I really applaud your, uh, your direct approach there. I mean, going through agencies is great, but sometimes it's like you're throwing your CV into the sea and, you know, or, or just a sea of noise and it's wherever that CV falls down into someone's inbox and, yeah, it can be a little bit of a roll of the dice sometimes, but the direct approach is, is ver- it's you know a, a lot of people shy away from that. Um, I I think, but uh, I think the direct approach is a good good approach because it's sort of like, you know, you, you're you're talking to them directly, and um, you you make that line of com- communication yourself, um, rather than sort of giving an agency to to do it, which works for works fine you know it's just you've obviously um sought out that that company that's that's the company that you want to work for it's not a case of you know here's my cv agency go and try and find me a job you know you've taken the ownership on yourself to actually hunt down 
uh, uh, some 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 company, which is which uh, which I really applaud. I I I really I really like that. Um, and that shows commitment, and that shows passion, and that shows um, confidence. Um, just to do that. Um, okay. So, what what languages? What technology do you play with? What is the what is the thing that you you code at the moment? Yeah. So um, at the moment, we are using. Um, a lot of WordPress, so it's PHP, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we kind of, I, I started three months ago and then as soon as I got in, the director, um, made a decision that they weren't using jQuery anymore. So that's a good decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're straight onto vanilla JavaScript. Um, so we've kind of been working through new projects. We'll be starting with the, the kind of plain, simple, um, framework um and any jquery or anything like that i've got the the joy of ripping it out and replacing it so awesome. it's, it's been fun awesome awesome um yeah. I mean, yeah i mean that that's great because that's exposing you to legacy code um yeah. jquery is fantastic for you know for, for what it does but uh there there are other ways of doing it in in a much better sort of uh more efficiency gains and stuff but there is a a ton of legacy code floating about, um, you know, and that'll always be the case. So when you're learning to code, you're, um, and you're not in, you're not in a, a development job when you're learning to code, you're creating new things with new toys. Yeah. You're not exposed to things that are already in existence that are currently quote unquote working. Um, and then you're having to refactor. So it's a different, it's a different mindset and not all, all junior devs that I'm aware of get, get, get uh, that sort of level of exposure. So that's really good. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that. Um, what kind of versions do you play with, with, with like WordPress? Is it the latest Gutenberg type stuff or? No, um, we're still, we, we use the classic editor, but mm-hmm. a lot of our stuff, um, the kind of, they've got this, um, uh, CMS build within WordPress, um, which is called plot because we do events and, um, festivals mainly. Right. It's kind wow. of, um, pre-built for those kind of clients. So we already have, um, every festival wants a lineup and they want to sell tickets and they want to have an artist page and things like that. So a lot of it's advanced custom fields. Sure. sure. And we kind of manipulate that to what the client's needs are. Uh-huh. Well, what, um, can can you can you talk a little bit about what what it is that you're building? What kind of festivals and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So for the last, um, I think it's two three weeks, I've been creating um, snow bombing, which is a winter festival in Austria. Nice. Um, yeah. So it was kind of the first project. Um, the the first couple of months, the guys, um, well, the first month, they just kind of held my hand and they said, "Look, we're gonna we're gonna just." see how you go and um, they put me in little bits and I'd change the other thing. And then after the first couple of months, they were happy with where I was at and they had a good idea of my level. And they said, well, we'll give you a festival and, and you can go at it. And if you need help, you you can ask um, and kind of just go ahead. So for the last three weeks, I've been getting my teeth into that and, and it's been fantastic. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. Did, did you ever expect to be working on a snow bombing website? No, <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the, when you're in, working in the factory, you'll be thinking, oh, you know, this time next year, I'll be. <laughs> yeah, so much more interesting. And I remember, well, it was a month ago when I sat down, I looked at the designs and we, we used Figma. So it was all laid out and it was sheets and sheets and sheets of sites of the web pages. And I was thinking, I, I can't make this, this isn't going to happen. So, but you just have a go. Um, and the longer it, the the more you do it, the, the quicker you get. Um, mm. And I got there in the end, and mm. it's fantastic. Yeah, I never would have thought I'd be here in a year. No chance. A year. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, so, what what kind of tech are you are you planning on on learning uh, in the future? What, what's the what's the the goal on that? Um, it's kind of. Um, up in the sky at the minute. I mean, I've, I've spent the last the first three months just really trying to cement what I already knew. Um, anything new that I'm, I'm going through on a daily basis, I, I go through and make sure I understand fully. 
Mm -hmm. I'm still coming across new things at the moment that can completely baffle me. And I'm sure it's going to be that way for a while, but there's loads of interesting things. I mean, I I dabbled in React before I applied for the job. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get further into that. Uh, Headless CMS and um, progressive web apps. I mean, I've read all sorts of articles on these things, but just not got around to, to getting my teeth into it because it's, it's very busy at the minute mm. with a job and uh, moving house and things like that. And yeah. Going yeah. Out. Yeah. So. yeah. 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 We've been in, in contact for a while and it, you just sound like you're super busy <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and I can't believe that you, you, you actually want to do a talk about pod, on a podcast whilst you're on a holiday. That's just like baffling. I can't. <laughs> you like the industry, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, okay. So, so let, let, let's think back to, uh, when you were considering, um, this, this, this role, uh, and then sort of compare it to where you are now. Is there any kind of thing that surprised you? You know, is there anything that you didn't expect? Um, like maybe there was something that perhaps you, um, you didn't realize you would need to do or learn or something like that, or, you know, have to deal with. Um, well, yeah, it sounds a bit strange to say, but, Mm. um, obviously working in the factory, um, I don't have clients or anything like that. Our our customers, I'm, I've got a machine and the machine does that job. So kind of being thrown back into that world of clients again was very strange. Mm. Um, I worked in retail for a few years before that and, uh, it was definitely, uh, something that I was out of touch with. So, mm. so going back and, and kind of straight in, because we're such a small agency, there's there's eight of us, um, and you kind of exposed to that to communication with clients straight away. Mm. Um, it was definitely a shock to my system, um, and and certain things are expected, and you're expected to be able to clearly um, communicate with the clients and and let them know what's going on. And obviously, you've got to be careful what you say. No. <laughs> making sure that expectations are managed and things like that. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, is there, is there for for anyone who's listening who 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 um, is is working in the in the in the factory like what you were? Is there any advice that you can give to to those people who are thinking about doing this? Yeah, I mean, the best advice I could probably give is don't rush. Um, I got myself. Um, in a place financially that I knew I could take a hit um, on on a salary, and and I I didn't want to jump into a, a career that I might get spit straight out of. So I would kind of say, take your time, um, mm-hmm. and don't don't forget to enjoy the process of learning because because that's a big thing. Um, when I when I first started, and you're reading all these blog posts about getting a job in three months and things like that. Um, I became very frustrated with the fact that I knew I was nowhere near Mm -hmm. and you have to reassess and and create some realistic um, goals, especially when, if you've got kids or a full-time job Mm -hmm. and you just got to manage expectation and, and don't forget to enjoy the ride really. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That's a soundbite right there. Don't, don't forget to enjoy the ride. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I really appreciate you coming on, especially um, when you're on holiday. Um, is there anything you wish to add before we wrap up? Uh, no, I think that's it, Peter. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, again, thank you very much. There's a question I ask everybody, um, and uh, this is this is a, a a very interesting question from my perspective, and that is, if you could talk to your former self, what advice would you give? Uh, it can be more than one, and it doesn't have to be technical. It could be non-technical. What would you uh, what would you say to your former self? Um, I would probably say um, at the start I was going through a lot of the the big tutorials. Now uh, it was a checklist, so you'd go through a course and you tick it off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in at first I thought, yeah, that's it. I know that I've completed that one, and you'd move on to the next thing. And then a month later, I'd go back to it and think, I've got no idea what's going on or what I'm doing or anything like that. So. Um, personally, I found project-based learning to be much more productive, um, whether that be you're doing a, a course that creates a project and then you're extending it by creating features. Mm-hmm. You're just creating something yourself by scratch. And, and by doing that, you, you run into challenges where you need to go away 
learn something, come back and do it. And, and that's the way that I really kind of got there. Um, so I'd probably tell myself to cut out all the, um, the first lessons that I followed along and then just thought I'd completed it because it was a bit of a waste of time, to be honest, but you get there in the end. That's brilliant. Every time I ask this question, I get a completely different answer and they're all awesome. That was fantastic. Um, yeah. Before we go, how can people get hold of you? What's your, what's your handles and things? Um, yeah, probably best way is just message me on Twitter. Um, I'm, my handle is Matty, um, M-A-T-T-Y G-G-G-1. So. <laughs> All the Gs. Awesome. I'll put links in the show notes below and on screen too. Thank you very much, Matthew, for coming on. I do appreciate it. I'm going to let you get on with your fantastic holiday. You, it's a well-deserved holiday. Congratulations on coming on to the web development industry. Hats off to you. Thank you very much for you. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again I'll soon. You. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>